Hey, I'm back in my garage. I've had a few questions on oiling tools. What oil do you use? Do you have to use bazooka oil? Do you, what do you have to use? Listen, guys, I've been using WD-40 for years. I've got a bazooka hanging up on that wall. It's probably older than most of you guys on this on this video who are watching here. And, and this has been oiled with WD-40 for years never had a problem with it. So here's my bazooka now. I've been running this bazooka, I don't know, five years maybe? Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 26, six years now. Here it is. So here's this bazooka. It's one of the newer, well, you know, it's six years old now, so it's not newer by no means. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna be using this tomorrow. So I want to show you how I oil this. You know, first of all, I get the paper out of there. First thing I want to do is just check it. See, it's a little dirty. I got a little bit of stuff there, but it's not bad. I I had a hard time cleaning these tools the last time I was cleaning them because I had no uh, no hose. So, but what I'll try to do is I'll this thing doesn't spray with that very well, so I have to use this. But I'll oil the chain, right? I'll get the chain oiled. And then I'll oil this chain. Let's see, turn this down a little. I don't know if you can see that, how this chain moves. Okay, and then I'll come over to this side too. I'll pull it down and I'll oil that too. And then I'll also shoot it in here a little bit, open that flap up, shoot it in here. I'll shoot it in the nozzle, right there in the nozzle. But one of the most important areas to oil, and this is why I'm doing this. I'm, I, a man, a man named um, say Josh. My gosh, oh, if it's not Josh, I'm sorry, but he's from Canada, and he asked me about this Colombian bazooka that he had. That when he first starts out, it leaves a big air bubble, and why that happens. And this is probably why it happens. Listen, when you uh, when you engage this bazooka, you have this little tiny this little tiny head right there, right? And it hooks onto these little flaps that are on the circle. And as it spins, it turns this gear and rolls it up until it gets to the point where this kicks this kicks in pushes this in this kicks in pushes this in and then it can run freely it runs freely at that point okay right so you fill this tube this is a big tube you fill this entire tube up with mud and you're trying to pull all of this mud out of this of this tube with this little gear and this little thing here. So if if the stopper is not moving freely in here, if your mud is too heavy and you gotta try to pull heavy mud out with this cable, what's gonna happen is I gotta disengage this again, pull this around. Uh, hang around. What's going to happen is that little knob, that little knob right there, is going to slip on those gears because it's not strong enough to pull all of that mud. And you're going to have air bubbles because the second that slips, bare tape comes out with no mud on it because it's not winding up the cable, drawing the mud out. So I make sure every time I run a bazooka, if you look inside of here, I don't know if you can see inside there or not. That's very clean. And I always make sure that I oil this so that the stopper moves very freely. It moves really freely right here at the end of the bazooka. Again, if my mud is too heavy and the stopper's getting hooked up on the, on the tube itself because the, it's not moving freely, I'm gonna have blisters all the time. He said it only, only happens when he first starts out. And that would be absolutely true because this is where it dries out. Right here at the end is where it really dries out. That's where it needs most of the oil. That's usually where I just oil it. I don't shoot at the oil all the way down the tube. 
I just make sure that this is oiled right here. So that's my bazooka, guys. That's how I oil it. You know, today they're easy clean. I flip that screw, I pop this off. I can clean out inside of here real well, which I think I did on this the last time. I'm not gonna show you in case I didn't. So, uh, but I think I did it the last time. But I'm about to run this tomorrow. So it was a good thing to come out here, show you how I oil this thing up. And, uh, oh, one more thing. The newer bazookas, like this one, they got this little gauge right here. So I can pull this out, I can push this in, and this thing moves really, really freely, right? Or I can pull it out and it doesn't move as freely. It, you hear it click, <coughs> it's the brake. So if it's too tight, again, it, it, it needs to move freely. If it's too loose, it runs backwards. This runs back. <laughs> No, it's not doing it for me. This runs backwards. This should never run backwards. Uh, that means the brake's not engaged. But <clears throat> it should always run freely. This should always be running freely. <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> something just got in my throat. But I like to keep it right in between. You know, I, I don't like, like it super tight. But again, I don't want it to back up either. So what I'll usually do, I'll, I'll put it to the point. Here, listen. You can barely hear it, but that's too loose. Now I gotta tighten it up. It's probably still a little too loose. That sounds good. That sounds exactly right. It's still moving, it's free, but it's locked. You guys, have a great day. Hey, if you really like this video, subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, share it with somebody else. You have a great day.